Hi everyone, my name is Julie and today we're traveling to the Zagros Mountains to discover a language with a rich history and a long fight for existence and independence. Slav and welcome to the Kurdish language. Is there a language learning tool that polyglots all over the world are using? Yes, there is. Italki. And why is it so useful? Because it allows you to practice virtually any language with a native speaker. And that's a super effective way to learn, talking from experience. They actually offer one-on-one -on -one video lessons in over 150 languages, including minority or even highly endangered languages, which I particularly appreciate. For example, on italki you can learn Kurdish. Herbishi. Herbishi? Herbishi lifelong, but if you are saying very well and people say, oh, Herbishi stere. And perfect. Oh. You are grand. Booking a lesson is very easy. You can choose the type of lesson you want, you can pick when you want the lesson, you can even pick what other languages the teacher can speak. The best part about italki is the payment. You pay per lesson, no subscription, no commitment, and lessons start at only $5. Click the link in the description to start learning on italki and get an extra $5 for your first lesson using a code JULIE. Kurdish is spoken in a large contiguous area that extends from Turkey, Syria, Iraq, Western Iran and Armenia and also in Eastern Iran on the border with Turkmenistan. It is estimated that there are around 30 million native speakers of Kurdish. Kurds are probably the largest nation that doesn't have a country, so the status of their language varies greatly. In Turkey, the usage of Kurdish was banned until 1992. Now it is allowed to use Kurdish in everyday life, but not in media or education. In Syria, the usage of Kurdish is banned. In Iraq, however, Kurdish is one of the two official languages, along with Arabic. In Iran, Kurdish language is not banned, but it is not official either, so it's not used in public education. Kurdish is divided into three main dialects. Northern Kurdish, or Kurmanji, spoken by 16 million people in Turkey, Syria, Northern Iraq, and Northwest and Northeast Iran. Central Kurdish, or Sorani, spoken by around 8 million people in much of Iraqi and Irani Kurdistan. And this is the variety that is official in Iraq. And Southern Kurdish, or Pehlevani, spoken by around 3 million people, mainly in Western Iran. The dialects are actually quite different from each other and not mutually intelligible, so they could even be called distinct languages. However, they are still usually treated as dialects, as there is a strong feeling of Kurds themselves as a united nation speaking the same language. Kurdish forms a part of the Indo-European languages, that include branches like Germanic, Romance, Slavic, Indo-Aryan and many others, and we can still see similarities in the basic vocabularies of these seemingly different languages. All these languages originated from Proto-Indo-European, that was probably spoken around the steppes of southern Russia and Ukraine. From there, around 2500 BC, one branch migrated eastwards and became the so-called Indo-Iranians. During centuries, these Indo-Iranians were living in Central Asia, slowly migrating south. By the 8th century BC, the Iranian tribes of Mada and Parswa were already well established in the Zagros Mountains, according to the Assyrian records. These Mada went on and conquered pretty much all of the area, establishing the Median Empire. After that, the Parswa tribe conquered the Median Empire and much more and that came to be known as the Persian Empire. Nowadays, the Iranian languages can be divided into four groups – Southwest, Northwest, Central and Northeast. Kurdish belongs to the Northwest branch, while Persian belongs to the Southwest branch. We also see some ancient languages inside the Northwest branch – the Median language of the Median Empire and the Parthian language, a language of the Parthian Empire, the name Kurt probably originated from the Middle Persian Kurt, which means nomad tent dweller. This term originally designated any Northwest Iranian nomadic tribe, no matter the language they speak. And it seems that even in the 16th century, this word still conserved the original meaning. 
Only later, the word Kurd started referring to a Kurdish nation, which speaks Kurdish language. The earliest written texts in Kurdish date from the 16th and 17th century, when prominent Kurdish poets developed the literary Kurdish language. There were mentions of Kurdish language from before, though. A historian, Ibn Wahshia, came across Kurdish texts on agriculture in the 9th century AD. He also presents the Kurdish script in his book. However, some say that this script, along with some other scripts from his book, could have been just invented by the author. Another mention of Kurdish language is in relation to the two holy books of the Yazidi religion, practiced by around 1 million Kurds, the Yazidi Black Book and the Yazidi Book of Revelations. These books are written in the so-called Yazidi script and are dated of the 13th century AD. However, the authenticity of these books is highly disputed and it is believed that these were Western forgeries of the 19th century that were based on some local oral traditions. During its modern history, Kurdish have had many other writing systems. A Latin-based script has been and is still in use for Kurmanji, and an Arabic-based script has been and is still in use for Sorani and Pahlavani dialects. A Latin-based and then a Cyrillic-based alphabets of Kurmanji were developed in Soviet Union, mainly for Kurdish speakers in Armenia. There was even an Armenian-based script in use between 1921 and 1929. The currently used Latin alphabet has 31 letters and is based on the Turkish alphabet with some added letters. The modern Sarani alphabet is based on the Persian script, but unlike Persian, which is an Abjad, as some vowels are not represented in writing, Sarani script is actually almost a real alphabet. It has 34 letters and it has a symbol for all of its vowels except one. Now about the sounds themselves. In Kurmanji, there are eight vowel letters, six of them are pairs of long and short vowels, even though the pronunciation of short and long vowels slightly differs. The short E, for example, is more like a closed E versus the long, clean E. The Kurmanji consonants should be relatively easy to pronounce for an English speaker, as almost all sounds are familiar, except maybe for the H, that is mostly encountered in Arabic loanwords H and this rolled R, but not too aggressively rolled, more like a flap. In Sorani, there is no letter for the short E. All the other vowel sounds have their own unique Kurdish letter. Comparing to Kurmanji, in Sorani, there are a couple of extra consonant sounds. Now it's time to listen to Kurds and to how they speak their language. İdrasi dev kitap F12 salim berdavam daha çapkırım. Carna zamanı biyani duşanın biyani de çap bun ne visare ve kitabı. Gelek caran duşanın kurdi projname kovaran derketin. Beşek ji cara ekemş bo ve kitabı hat ne visin o cara ekem devede belav dedim. Fark ekemezin ave kitabı cidde kitabı mini beriye. E beri prani beremin honaki bun roman çirok. Divan cura berhemade نویسکار گلک جارا باسا کسی که دید که والا من ام امرو خوشحالم که هات مدهوک و هات ما خزمت جناب تان و تلویزیونی وار تی وی مسیر کرد براستی سرن جرا کشم ترتیبی خاوینی و ستافی جوان و او اجیزه و او ادواتی ایش کردن تیدا او رخستن و او دیسپلینی که بینیم لناو تلویزیون که جگه شنازیه بو خومن بو همو خاچ کردوستن Kurdish is a SOV language the verb always comes at the end of the sentence There used to be three genders in the proto-Iranian language While the gender has been lost in Sorani it has been conserved in Kurmanji Sorani in turn developed a system for marking definitiveness which is not obligatory in Kurmanji in Sorani, there are different endings for a definite and indefinite noun. Kurmanji also conserved a system of four cases, while Sorani only has nominative and ezafe, a letter that connects a possessive noun or an adjective to the main noun. Kurdish has a complex system of verb conjugation. Each verb has a present and past stem, to which person and number endings are added. In Sorani, there is no future tense, 
which is indicated by the present. In Kurmanji, future is formed by placing e after the subject plus the subjunctive form. Kurdish is one of the rare Indo-European languages that has ergativity, and this fact completely blew my mind. Ergativity is something that you find in languages like Georgian or Basque, not Indo-European, but then I see on this map that all Indo-Aryan languages are ergative, so it blows my mind a little bit less now. Kurdish shows ergativity in past tense with transitive verbs, but not in the present tense. In the past, the subject switches to the oblique case, and the object becomes in the nominative. It is kind of difficult to translate this in English, but the phrase I saw you could be literally translated as something like to me you were seen. No matter the hardships, Kurdish language and culture has been able to survive and thrive. This is manifested by the ancient Kurdish tradition, Dengbej, storytelling that is performed by singing. Dengbejis are being created to this day, so this old tradition is still very much alive and practiced. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed this little exploration of Kurdish and if you like languages, don't forget to subscribe for more. And if you want to influence the next language selection, go to my Patreon, become my top tier Patreon and you'll be able to vote for the next language. Thank you so much for watching and see you in our next exploration.